Hello, it's time to saddle up for one heck of a ride as I pedal some level 9 imaginative writing tricks and tips. We're going to look at a question, plan and execute a glorious response. So glorious, in fact, it's going to render that dead-eyed examiner as putty in our palm. And here's the task we're going to crank out a response to. It's going to be about a time when you or someone you know experienced jealousy. My response is going to be imagined. Of course it's going to be imagined. Mr. Taylor's a lot like Mary Poppins on so many levels. Not least because he is practically perfect in every way. So he doesn't really do jealousy. Oh, are you? And uh, you get marks, as you know, on the accuracy of your spell and your punctuation, your broad vocabulary, all that flap doodle. This message ain't new, but plan what you do. All your work will look like poo. Now, I'm sure you're turning emerald green with envy right now at my poetical prowess. Two ways to plan your work, which you have to do, you need to think about what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, but more on that later. Now my narrative that I'm going to show you, my exam response, is going to be a pick and mix of lies, half-truths and misremembrances. Jeez, I should go into politics, shouldn't I? And uh, well, it's going to focus on a time I was really jealous of a Palmine's new spiffy bike. But for the love of Lucas aid, don't write it like this. Now I'm sure most of you are smart enough not to turn out a howler like this. You know, a whole task concertina down into one fat flawed paragraph of bilge. So many things that are wrong with it, we'll come through a few very briefly. Too many souls and ands to stretch out sentences. If you're doing that, stop, rethink your strategy. Probably requires a full stop and a different word to kick off the next sentence. Also, you've got too many uh, bits of dialogue on the same line. Different speaker warrants a different line. Now we're stepping it up a gear. This is one of my first paragraphs, and uh, it's a little bit of reverse engineering here, because I'm showing you this flashy fountain of level nine greatness, you know, the, the end product, the paragraph first. Then we're gonna work backwards to the planning stage. I'm gonna show you how I created this paragraph, because, you know, I didn't pull this paragraph out my bottom. It was carefully planned, thinking about what I was gonna say and how I was gonna say it and clock that picture on the right of a young Mr. Taylor living out his BMX bandit fantasies, all fuzzy hair and plus-size schnoz. Jesus, was the only kid on the street who couldn't see further than the end of his nose, but still had 20-20 eyesight. And here's the first part of the plan from which that great paragraph stemmed. And first of all, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm very simply going to talk about before the jealousy, two pals who just love going cycling together. And here's the second part of that plan, with me thinking about how I'm going to write, how I'm going to frame my ideas in silk and prose, you know, lovely level nine language and structural techniques to strike a spark of warmth in the examiner's cold, cold soul. So I'm going to use verbs like tearing along on a bike and hurting along, perhaps an adjective like rickety for my rough old BMX. And, well, Mr. Taylor, you clever Trevor, you, you're going to use a long sentence to capture the fluent movement of the bicycle moving. Jeez, I bet JK Rowling is crying herself to sleep right now, wishing she'd thought of that one. There's Mr. Taylor winning by a nose again. Now this is the final bit of plan that I'll work through with you. Obviously I'll show you the full plan and the response later. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna say that I was the faster rider until my friend got his new spiffy bike. And there's a few language and structural techniques in red that I'm gonna apply in the finished paragraph. Here's the finished product in all its level nine finery. Lock eyes on it, see how that plan helped to shape it. Initially, jealousy was one emotion that seldom sullied my soul. After all, I was the better bike rider. And then Fraser's parents bought him a new bike. It was a beauty, a sleek racer, gleaming and majestic in neon red. Within seconds of seeing it, I felt a toxic wave of jealousy surge around my body, a bubbling rage at the injustice of life. Now, I'm going to bookend or start and finish my response with a quick line or two. And this is going to provide shape or structure to the whole exam response. Trust me, this is going to have the examiner putting in his love heart contact lenses when he locks eyes on it. And there's the top or the introduction to my response, which plays on the idea of Shakespeare's that jealousy is a green eyed monster. And it's also kind of launching a time machine and sending the examiner back to the 1980s. He knows this happened in the past, a long time ago. There's the end of the response, one or two lines to round off. Now, you'll have noticed the intro and the conclusion are both, if you like, set in the present. Well, admittedly, the introduction is written in the past tense. But what they're doing is, it's just playing with time. It's a little time shift device, going back in time in the introduction, coming back to the present at the conclusion. It's a very simple thing to do, and trust me, the examiners are fun. 
Now you'll be relieved to hear that I'm not going to run through the rest of my narrative, my exam response with you. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to lay on my pen and paper plan for you to see and the exam response. Remember, the basic idea is that jealousy made me do something bad. And that act of jealousy has very painful consequences. Painful at least for my old pal Fraser. Is this a true account? As I've said, no it's not. I'm not that evil really. I'm not the psychopath of the psychopath. But the exam is not going to be gaffer tape of me to lie detector, is it? So, it's not a problem. Listen, if you don't like me, don't like my videos, don't buy my book. But, scores of students will attest that this ridiculously cheap, eye-wateringly good little read is going to give you a huge edge in exam writing tasks. It's up to you though. There's my plan for the entire response in all its splendour, colour coded for clarity, blue what I was going to say, red how I was going to say it. Should your plan look so pretty pretty and colourful in the exam? Good lord no, it's not an art exam is it, it's English. My actual plan looked like a furball coughed up by the cat, I've only redone it for your eyes. This is like for demonstration purposes, this clarity and presentation. And here's the entire response if you're inclined to read it. If not, bow out now. This first page here, you've got the stuff in green. Those are words that link to the task, because the task is on jealousy. The red stuff, that's powerful language techniques. The yellow stuff's interesting. That's where I'm creating flow and structure using small words and phrases that subtly link back to the previous paragraph. That creates flow, creates cohesion, that helps stitch my response into this pleasant whole. Here's the second page. I stress that I did write this under time conditions, cross my heart, hope to die, pinky swears and everything. I did uh, 15 minutes planning, 25 minutes writing, and 5 minutes at the end checking everything was kosher. I've only typed it just for your benefit. Nearly done now, one little page after this. And now we are done. Imaginative writing, handled like a pro. Mr Taylor's going to ride off into the sunset, wishing you best of luck in that exam hall. <laughs>